but it, but it, you know it's a how do we try to make fact-based decisions and fact-based remedies yes uh, but if something's not right and we can improve it we want to we want to do that it would be nice if you could check the speed um like going towards centerville from uh, chestnut valley just to catch an idea in that section where, where it appears that they're speeding um, are they are they not I'm, and i'm glad that somebody pointed out the, the educational purpose mm -hmm. maybe we should have maybe we should have more of those that that more of that type of equipment well i thought about that in the past to understand that you know people do slow down because they're bad. <laughs> they see that the um the gentleman's comment about widening the road though that's not no that that it, that increases yeah. speed and so does maintaining it like you and you know he's suggesting that we get curbs and sidewalks and no. that's not going to be on the if, if that would happen, that's not going to be on the residents or not going to be on the township, obviously. Well, you can imagine the changes that I've seen. Oh, yeah, yeah, years. yeah. You know, um, are there restrictions on the truck traffic in right. Spring Valley? <laughs> You're not allowed back in. <laughs> now, when you say truck, not truck. You can't announce the truck. You can't say Fake body trucks. Yeah. <laughs> no, you no, get to sit between Susan promoted. and Chief. I mean, oh, come on. Promoted. That's that's uphill. So get over there. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you have more to talk about. Thank you. All right, traffic, traffic. Uh, drink up, drink up, drink up. I know, they keep moving. Thank you. Well, we have them. Yeah, I just. I, 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 I always like when I pull it. Yes. Yeah. Here. And then look at the toilet. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Well, it's like it's maybe some honor or somebody. Yeah. Shame that more people don't participate in the local government. Yeah. But then I know. We need more. We need more community input. Direct, yeah. direct community input. No doubt. I'm one of these people that can knock on doors. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and destroying all the parts. I heard not. Got my text. Oh, how's it going, Andy? Very good. How about you? Beautiful day today, huh? Oh my gosh, it's so out a little bit. Away from the desk. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> More days like that. Hundred percent. Coming to a close. I think you're right on that. Oh. Chopping firewood, trying to catch up for the summer. I didn't get any wood build, wood pile build up. So I'm kind of trying to take care of that. Now isn't now a better time, like as far as heat and. Exhaustion. Yeah. Well, true. Right now, it's a good time to be doing it. Josh Parsons was down here, but I guess it's for the Wait, I think so. I, I think, think there's anything else that. Yeah. That uh, interesting. Uh, county commissioner, anyway. Um, yeah, I think yeah. that's like, well, what are we doing? Yeah, I thought so too. 
I guess we have conditional use hearing, which I didn't quite know that was going to be on there myself. Right. That's the one where I think that one should be pretty non controversial. So that for development, but then I guess decided not to. I mean, this is years ago. Correct. I guess there was not much interest. I think Scott did talk about it. Yeah, we there was a lot of residential opposition to it, and then and then in addition over the years, I think part of what we do want to do, I think, is some stormwater up there to catch some of the lower. Um, yeah. So that's what that's really great. Yeah. Well, even when this is yeah. I guess I'm plugged in for traffic commission. Uh, there used to be like a USB. I'm not plugged into USB. Hey, Josh, how are you? Good to see you. What's new? I'm Andy Weaver. I work in there at the courthouse to the engineer's office and also PC for a couple years. That's going back quite a while. I think I, yeah, I think you're still in the DA's office. Probably, yeah. Yep. Probably ran into each other on the elevator. This floor's been vacant for like 10 years. Oh, really? You just, yeah. Well, I guess the courts will eventually get it finished. Okay. So, nice courtrooms or what? Uh, the DA's office is the sixth and seventh floor now. Fifth okay. floor is Kevin's okay. chair. Okay. That explains why okay. I have two of these. Cool. Best for you. Who is recognition? Okay. Hey, Cindy. As much as I'd like to do the meeting standing up. There it is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm more of it, but. <laughs> so, Cindy, I hate to have a technical question at this moment, but my laptop doesn't have a USB connector. Wow, look at you, problem solver. <laughs> <laughs> so I can just, I can just call him. <laughs> I could not. Now, I, I was inundated I just to make sure he didn't the last two weeks with yeah, emails, and I could have easily deleted what you. you had said. Um, um, I had other Steve, emails from you, but not the agenda. Mm -hmm. And I sent it while I was away. <laughs> okay. Is there anything different than what's on this? Okay, then you don't have to. I have a problem. Who got the front row seat? Okay. Okay. So, plus it'll give them a little bit of a pause while we're on. I think that might be a real good fit. Let me know. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> it's a good thing, though. Oh, you use that one, can you? That's okay. We'll just we'll roll with the punches. Need... It's more of the same. Hey, how are you? USB, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. Somehow I got stuck up here. I had the phone I shared with the chief. Did party Charles's He's head gonna explode? Oh. Mm, that's what I just told him. I said we were not making a fortune off of my body coming to the office. Yeah. yeah. Keep so getting more interesting. Cindy, there's nothing in the consent agenda that I should be concerned about. I don't think should be paid for Anybody? Anybody? Probably like 95%. Yeah. Thanks, Ben. It's got a little real here. Yeah, I'm, I'm over. Give me what I can. You guys, all ready? You ready with Zoom? Yes.
Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to East Enfield Township Board of Supervisors meeting. I'm going to submit this is one of the biggest meetings we've had in a long time. So everybody welcome. I have a reading I got to do each time for our meeting. So tonight's meeting has been advertised to be held in person and online using Zoom with login and call-in information posted on our website. Tonight's video and audio is being recorded. For tonight's meeting, Robert's rules will apply for the meeting and will be run by the chairman who will be assisted by an employee managing the Zoom site. Everyone on Zoom will have their microphones muted in order to be heard for audio clearly. During the meeting, both those present online, only one person speaks at a time and they must be recognized by a chairman. Many people speak at the same time, combined with background noise to make it possible to hear on Zoom. This rule will be strictly enforced. For people utilizing Zoom, you'll need to use the chat function to be recognized by the chairman. To be recognized for the chat function, you must either be a presenter who's on the agenda or a resident or business owner in Central Township who wishes to comment on an agenda item where you must text your name and address. Your request to speak will then be passed on by staff to the chairman to be recognized. The steps to speak utilizing Zoom are simple. One, recognize, recognize, request recognition by the chairman via chat to speak. Two, once recognized by a chairman, unmute your microphone. Three, after receiving recognition, speak. Four, when done, mute your microphone. For Zoom, any violation of the mentioned rules will be deemed to be acting out of order, and your microphone will be muted immediately without warning. Continue violations will result in you being electronically removed from the meeting. Robert's rules applies for those attending the meeting in person. All voting tonight will be done by roll call to ensure all votes are properly accounted for. Roll call will be conducted by a township manager. There will be no action taken on any non-agenda items of a non-emergency, non-urgent nature that arise during the meeting. All such items will be referred to staff and will be handled at a later date. East Enfield Township's public comment rules will apply for the meeting comments. You must be a resident of the township to speak. You must identify yourself by name and address before speaking and sign the guest log for meeting purposes or follow the chat function already discussed. Comment is limited to three minutes and must be about agenda item being discussed with the exception of the public comment period at the end of the meeting for non-agenda items. And no action will be taken during the public comment period for non-agenda items and all issues will be referred to staff. So I'm sorry about all the legalese, but we're done with that. We'll now move on to our regular agenda items. Please rise for a moment of silence and the pledge. Now the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Maybe see it. Okay, tonight we got uh, three major items on our agenda and the first two are some recognitions, which I think the majority of the people are probably here for tonight as I'm looking around the room and seeing everybody present. We have uh, two items that we're gonna be discussing, a life-saving recognition by Penn State Health for the life-saving efforts on August 9th, 2021, and a second recognition by our police and fire for life-saving on October 4th, 2021. Uh, so I think, I'm trying to figure out, this is kind of ad lib at this point. Scott Beakley from Lifeline EMS is with us to do the first presentation. Is, is he actually present in the meeting or on he Zoom? Yes, he's right here. Okay, Scott, if you would like to come forward, please. Good evening, and uh, thank you for uh, having us here tonight. Uh, my name is Scott Beakley. I'm the director of Penn State Health Lifeline. Um, Penn State Health Lifeline uh, has been in Lancaster County now for two and a half months. Um, and this is actually an honor to be here tonight to talk about a clinical save like this. Um, and we're, we're really optimistic with uh, this, what we have as far as an EMS program. And uh, we're definitely optimistic with uh, where we can go with this and things to come down the road. What I'd like to talk about is a uh, clinical save, as we call it. This is a cardiac arrest of a patient who was out of the hospital. Um, before I start off, uh, I want to give a couple statistics just on the background to kind of paint the severity of uh, how this can impact a patient and how the survivability, quite honestly, is usually very low, okay? And what you have here tonight are many people who were involved in this chain of survival, and that's truly what it is, is a chain of survival. Um, I've kind of taken upon the, uh, the phrase that uh, I really like a lot is it takes a village to save a life. And what you see here tonight is part of that village that helps save a life. 
So just a quick overview is sudden cardiac arrest is, a, is an abrupt loss of heart function, breathing, and consciousness. Uh, sometimes it can come on due to a pre-existing medical condition. Sometimes it can come on for no known reason at all. In one year alone, 475,000 Americans uh, can die from sudden cardiac arrest. More than 350,000 cardiac arrests occur outside of a healthcare facility. So whether it be a residence, a public facility, um, you know, a park along the side of the road, uh, they don't always happen in healthcare facilities. And that's where the chain of survival was truly, truly imperative to have bystanders trained how to do CPR and good access to automated defibrillators, which we obviously promote that uh, the community learn CPR and also have access to these defibrillators. Um, bystander survival is definitely important to this, to this chain. 70% um, of these uh, cardiac arrests where bystander survival has made an impact um, has been in these public settings. So it truly goes to show. Uh, among adults who are treated by EMS, 25% of these patients usually have no symptoms. They just, it just happens suddenly for no apparent reason. And also in the healthcare setting, we also see that post cardiac arrest, these people who are resuscitated, um, the doctors sometimes they have a very difficult time pinning down what caused the cardiac arrest. Um, survival of hospital discharge for EMS related pre hospital cardiac arrest is usually less than 10%, with less than 8% of those patients being neurologically intact and actually able to or return to a normal life without any type of impairments. So we have a long way to go before we can improve that, that, that chain of survival and get those numbers up. We're very happy with the efforts that have been made, not just in Lancaster County and, and, and the East Hemfield community here, but also all the communities across America. But again, we, we feel we have a long way to go with this. The case I'd like to talk to you about tonight uh, is involving Mr. James Malley, who is here with his uh, family. Um, he has graced us uh, with being able to tell his story. And I'll just give you a brief uh, overview of the, uh, the case here. Uh, on August 9th, 2021, uh, Mr. Malley was at his home here uh, in Hemfield and had a sudden cardiac arrest. Um, he basically was in his kitchen. He was uh, having dinner and um, had no prior complaints. His wife heard a thump and went out and found him on the floor. Uh, Mr. Malley's son went ahead and started CPR on him while his wife went ahead and called 911. Um, EMS uh, was summoned along with the Hemfield Police Department and Hemfield Fire Department. Uh, Hemfield Police Department arrived on scene first um, and then uh, found Mr. Uh, Malley doing CPR, or Mr. Malley's son doing CPR, uh, and continued with that. EMS and the Fire Department arrived shortly after. Uh, paramedic Blanche Flower, who is here for us tonight, was the first paramedic on the scene, and she stated that when she got to Mr. Malley's son, um, his son was doing excellent textbook CPR. Um, I mean, you, you know, you, you can't you can't ask for anything better than that. Um, very chaotic scene, as it always is with a pre-hospital cardiac arrest. Um, Mr. Malley was clinically deceased when we first arrived. Um, he had um, applied the heart monitor and he needed a defibrillation from the heart or from the uh, defibrillator, shocks of electricity to his heart. Um, he needed three of those uh, out of the hospital uh, done by EMS. Um, and eventually when Mr. Malley uh, woke up, he, just kind of on a joking side, he said that he felt that and he remembers that, okay? Uh, also, when he finally did wake up, his only complaint really was that his chest hurt from the CPR, which if that is the worst side effect, that's not a bad day, okay? Um, our additional staff are, arrived on scene. Uh, paramedic Knopf arrived uh, on our uh, paramedic squad and uh, assisted paramedic Blanche Flower, um, along with uh, EMT Swift on our crew. Um, and they provided uh, advanced cardiac life support. IVs were established, a continued cardiac monitoring, medications were given, continued oxygenation um, by, uh, the, from BLS measures and also assisted by various members of the Hemfield Fire Department as well. Um, patient was uh, subsequently loaded into the ambulance and transported to Lancaster General Hospital, um, where he was uh, resuscitated and the, the physician staff in the emergency department stated that this call ran textbook. Okay, uh, you couldn't ask for a better series of events uh, for this to, to occur. And uh, Mr. Malley is uh, here with us tonight, um, you know, to show the fruits of his effort. We have uh, an award presentation that we have. There, there is a citation that we, uh, in the EMS world, we have that uh, is available for our EMS providers, but we're also able to extend that to 
uh, the police department and also uh, our colleagues from the fire department as well. The other thing that's special about this ward tonight is it doesn't happen very often, but we're extending this EMS citation um, to Mr. Malley's son as well for his efforts in the bystanding, uh, the bystander CPR. <laughs> If you bear with me here, I'll go ahead and I'll, uh, I'll do a roll call and we'll call out uh, these names. So uh, from the police department, Officer Ethan Etter. Also have Officer Kyle Brown. And Officer John Sch Schmidtke. I hope I said that right. So Schmidtke's not here. Okay, if you want to give that to him for us. And then... Officer Brown. Fire department who uh, came uh, with several people that night as they are here tonight. Uh, we have several people we'd like to, uh, to uh, call out. Uh, Chief Josh Newcomer. Okay, so he's helping cover, that's great. <laughs> Uh, firefighter Alex Borton, come on up and we'll receive your awards. Firefighter Amber Fair. Forgive me, I'm working without a net tonight, so. <laughs> Adam Martin, our ops manager, usually handles these. I usually just come along to take the pictures. He has down with the flu, we think. So he called me and said, hey, I need you to do this tonight. So bear with me. <laughs> Firefighter Cody Hart. Firefighter Benjamin Hersh Herskowitz. <laughs> And lastly, the crew from Lifeline, Paramedic Candace Blanchflower. EMT Robert Swift. Paramedic William Kenoff. And we do have additional certificates for them for the sake of time. These, uh, these additional certificates are from the Emergency Health Services Federation. We'll give you uh, afterwards. Uh, the certificates that we're giving everybody are also from Penn State Health. Uh, in addition to the emergency health services. And then lastly, but not least, uh, I'd like to uh, have a, a nice round of applause uh, for Mr. Shane Kennedy, who is receiving the citizen citation for clinical save. <laughs> I said, we also have some, some additional certificates and the uniform decorations for our crews that uh, we'll distribute to them, but we just wanted to thank everybody for their efforts. And again, you know, like I said, if you look around the number of people involved in just the rescue of one person, it's, it's truly an honor to be associated with these folks. Uh, and it's truly uh, an honor to, to show the work that goes into just saving one life in, a, in the community. And this happens every day, as you well know, so. Thank you very much. Well, we got a couple more things. I, Commissioner Parsons, do you have uh, yours too at this point? Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, other supervisors and staff. It's good to be in uh, East Hempfield Township, my favorite of the 60 municipalities in Lancaster <laughs> County. I liked it so much I moved here. Um, so we, we appreciate what you all do uh, for the great quality of life here. But uh, Adam Martin uh, reached out and um, 
because of this uh, save and just asked if I could come and just say a few words. So I brought a letter of commendation um, just because, you know, on behalf of the 550,000 citizens in Lancaster County, we want to recognize when people do great things and, you know, people here who do great things every day, but it's not every day that you, you have the opportunity uh, to save a life. And that's important. It's important to our community. It's important to recognize that. So, um, yeah, I won't read the whole uh, letter of commendation, but I'll just read part. The Lancaster County Board of Commissioners is honored to recognize the coordinated efforts of members of Penn State Lifeline, East Hempfield Police Department, Hempfield Fire Department, who responded to the call of cardiac arrest. We express our gratitude um, to all those involved, and it names those involved who have already been uh, named from the uh, Penn State Lifeline, the police, the fire department. And we uh, just say that we recognize the value and importance of individuals who dedicate their professional life to public service. And that is important. So it's with respect and appreciation that the Board of Commissioners, on behalf of all the citizens of Lancaster County, take this opportunity to express our appreciation to everyone for their diligence and commitment in ensuring a safe environment for our community. Signed, Josh Parsons, uh, Ray Diagostino, and Craig Lehman, the Board of Commissioners. So thank you all. I think what I would like to first say is thank you for coming to our community. Um, Susquehanna Valley EMS was a, a pioneering organization um, and it's great to have Penn State now with Lifeline coming on and picking up uh, what they established with a true regional EMS. And it's exciting having you here in our future Penn State Hospital here and already have the Lime Springs facility and a number of us in the township are part of the Penn State Health as my family is too. So it's just nice, nice to see that here and nice to see Penn State stepping up and taking on the, the uh, EMS role in our township, as well as multiple other townships in Lancaster County. So thank you for that. Um, is there anything on the board? Because after that, I'd like to get a group picture with everybody that was involved and the family. If, or if you're able to come and join us, that would be great. And you're obviously front and center. I uh, will grab a picture, but is there anything else from the board at this point? I'd just like to say with so much negative news out there, it's nice to come to a meeting and have something really positive take place. So um, I'm grateful for everyone that was involved. Thank you. In that regard, Mr. Chairman, I would welcome the board to give a standing ovation for these folks. For what they do. I'd like to grab a picture and then we're going to have round two. It's which is, this is very unusual that we have this much uh, life saving occurring in town. If we could have everybody come that was involved up front, if we can raise the screen real quick so the East Enfield's in the background, that would be great. So, if you officers, firemen, the family, if we can come up front in front of the table right there, we'll grab a picture. <laughs> Remember me? I do remember. Okay, Okay, as I said, this is very unusual where we actually have two major life savings that have occurred and, uh, and it all happened at roughly the same type of recognition. So I'll first turn over to Ms. Garber, our emergency management coordinator for the township. 
And then we do have actually a recognition uh, uh, that we would like to recognize Mr. Kevin Buckwater. So Ms. Garber. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So um, on Monday, October 4th at approximately 8.15 in the morning, police fire and EMS units were dispatched to 103 North Lawn Circle for a residential structure fire. Um, the crews arrived along with the police department to find that there was a fire at the rear of the residential home. And thankfully at that point, everyone was out of the unit that was involved as well as the adjacent residences. The reason for that was determined to be Kevin Buckwalter who is here with us this evening. Kevin, if you would come join me up here, please. <laughs> so, um, as I understand it, and I was not there, but I've um, heard both from fire and police units on the scene that um, Kevin is a neighbor and was leaving for work and recognized that the fire was occurring to the rear of 103 North Lawn. Um, he was able to determine that that is in fact the house that was on fire and was able to wake the occupants to get them out. And if the Simmons family would want to join me. Kevin was able to um, wake the girls who were sleeping in 103. Um, as well as the other residents in the um, surrounding homes. And the fire department was then able to contain the fire to 103. However, it was, there was concern from the very start as to whether or not they would be able to contain it. So upon completion of the incident, Officer Geisler from East Hempfield Township Police Department, who is standing behind me, um, was obtaining photographs from the scene and recognized that the couch that Corinne was sleeping on um, was only about 10 feet away from the patio door that where the fire had been burning. It was determined that because Kevin was able to, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm getting emotional. Um, because Kevin was able to wake Corinne, she was able then to wake her sister Soraya. And it is believed by the police department and in discussions with the fire department that because of Kevin's actions, we had a very different um, outcome from that fire than what could have been. And so this evening, Kevin, your actions are being recognized by the East Tempfield Township Board of Supervisors with an outstanding citizen award for your willingness to assist your neighbors in this very dangerous situation and for your efforts in saving their lives. Mr. Chairman. Kevin, what we have here is an outstanding citizen award so moved second aye so congratulations and it's a wonderful job that people run to a burning house, not running away from us. So thank you for all you did. So thank you. I'm sure the family appreciates it too. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's a good start to a meeting tonight. Indeed. Now, if you're here for those two things, you're obviously invited to stay. Uh, we got a lot of exciting things to talk about our agenda, <laughs> talk about sidewalk ordinances and other fun things like that. But if you want to leave, I'm not going to be offended either at this point. So. Cindy, are we ready to pop up where the committee uses in public space? 
are we ready to pop up if a question comes up about what the permitted uses are for this rezone? Just as a tip, it might be good to have that in the hand. It's on the slide? Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, that was, it was nice having some good news. I'm glad you could stay. So it's uh, anybody who's taken this CPR and, and uh, life-saving course, it's actually nice to see that it does work when it's called a pod. So um, we're going to move on to our next agenda item, and that is the rezoning. It's a rezoning hearing of 918 Nisley Road. It's two parcels from low-density residential to recreation and open space. I assume by a show of hands, is that what the majority of the people that are left in the audience are here to talk about tonight? Okay, a couple more people. So we're gonna talk about that tonight. Um, so this is an official hearing. I will be turning it over to our solicitor to help guide our, our discussion uh, through the process. We can also give some background information uh, since I've been on the board the whole time this property has been discussed over the years. So I have a lot of history that goes back with this property. So. Uh, Ms. Piper. Okay, thank you. Uh, so this is a public hearing to take comments and presentations um, concerning the proposal to rezone these two tracts of land. Um, in this case, the township is making the proposal to rezone the property. Um, notice of tonight's hearing has been properly advertised in LNP and the property was posted. Um, we will begin by having township staff uh, make a presentation or explanation as to the reasons for the request and the proposed ordinance. Um, then we will then open it up to the board to ask questions. Um, after the boards happen, had an opportunity to ask their questions, then the board will open the hearing to receive public comment. Um, this is not necessarily a, an opportunity to ask questions to the board, um, but really to ask questions about the proposal that's before the board to consider tonight. After all of the public comment has been presented, the board will um, close the hearing and decide um, how it wishes to proceed with the ordinance that you have before you. Okay, thank you. So with those rules, I guess we'll open up first to Township staff. Ms. Schweitzer, how do you um, want to proceed on your end? Uh, just the fact that the, the, the hearing has been properly, the property has been properly posted. We did also send uh, notices to the neighborhood. Anybody that was adjoining the uh, parcels was provided a letter and also a copy of the map that you have on your screens before you. Uh, the uh, current zoning is on your left side which matches most of the residential areas in the neighborhood. And the proposed zoning is on the right side, which actually matches the same zoning as the golf course. We're zooming into the allowed uses on um, the um, recreation and open space land to give you some context as to what that is. Um, and I can go over those. Uh, the permitted uses in the recreation open space zoning district would be agricultural use, residential use, business use, civic, social, or utility uses, accessory uses, and then by special exception would be golf course and small cell, um, macro cell uh, towers. And just to go into the civic uh, social utility uses includes greenways, municipal use, Park and recreation facilities, private and or commercial, park and recreation facilities, public, private clubs, public utilities, um, co-locations with the towers, right away of co-locations and right aways of small towers on municipal property. And then accessory, oh, I did mention that one, that was number five. So uh, the one parcel is almost 17.1 acres. The second parcel is 4.9. We are identifying as 918 Nisley Road. The smaller parcel of 4.9 actually has a property address of Stony Battery. We're not quite sure how that got created, uh, but that is the official address of that smaller parcel. And the proposal is for both parcels. I guess I'll, I'll start talking a little bit first about this. Um, one, just to clarify one thing on the recreational open space, when it says residential use, it's a one single family detached dwelling of a historic nature. And you can see why it's a her house next door is the reason we have that written into our open space 
uh, ordinance. That's what that's kind of attracted for. It's not for building a housing development. Um, I was on the board when this was originally brought up. I think it was 2010 or 2011 at that point um, when it was being discussed to actually sell and develop the land. Uh, the township ultimately did not go forward with that. There was multiple reasons. One, there was a lot of outcry from the residents. Uh, two, the township decided to go a different route with the golf course. And three, the property just did not come even close to what the assessed value, uh, what the township thought would be fair use for that property. Uh, since that time, it's sat and it's been farmed. Uh, the house that was on there was torn down. Uh, it was no longer safe and serviceable. Uh, it had been rented to a former uh, golf course employee. And then when that employee moved on, the house was demolished. Uh, it was just simply the upkeep was going to get too expensive. Since then, we've been maintaining the whole property for agricultural use at this point. Um, we had originally looked at uh, when we had the residents the first time around talk about uses. There was talk about trying to make parks or something on that, but really it's not ideal uh, for our park location. It really is truly open space at this point. It's You can't put soccer fields on that. It's not, it's too sloped and it's not really uh, ideal for that type of use. Uh, so the current board decided to uh, bring this before and to look at uh, just rezoning this into open space. Uh, there's a couple of reasons why the, there really is no desire at this point with this board of supervisors. And I'm speaking for myself, although other board members can contradict me if I'm wrong with this. There's no desire for this with this current board to sell this track and develop it. Uh, so if that's the case, our desire is to make it with what our intent is. And our intent is to keep it as open space right now. Uh, so that's what the zoning request is before you tonight. It's, it's basically reflecting the current will of this board that this should be open space. Um, and a future board, if a future board decides to revisit it, uh, they would then have to rezone it into another use uh, in order to develop it. Uh, so there's, it puts an additional step that would have to occur for a future board. So it's kind of our way of saying to our, the residents that raised those objections originally that we listen to you. Uh, so that's what the, the uh, purpose of this, this rezoning request is tonight. Uh, it does mean it is an open space. Uh, so there are municipal uses that someday a board could choose to do, uh, but they certainly have less of an impact than anything residential. Uh, so there could someday, and there's no intention of it now, but just to put it on the record, a board 10 or 15 years from now could say, we're consolidating our fire departments and that would be a great location for a firehouse. That would take up a couple of our acres of development. The rest of it still would remain open space. Uh, there could be a future board someday that says, well, our police department has outgrown its current facility here. We need a new location for our police department. Again, we just remodeled our police facilities here. So there's not a chance right now that that's gonna happen. But I'm just giving you examples of potential municipal uses. A future board might decide that they do wanna try and put a pocket, park at, a pocket park at that location. Again, that's not in our game plan at this point as a current board, uh, but that would be a permitted use in the public and open space zone at this point. Uh, so I, when we rezone, there's always some things that can occur. So I just wanted to explain to you guys what could occur. That doesn't mean right now we're doing anything. If we were going to develop any land right now for recreational open space, it'd probably be the side farm, uh, which is already ideally suited for sports fields. And there's no desire right now to do that either um, because we haven't had the request for that to occur. So I've hogged the microphone. I'll turn it over to any other board member who wants to speak at this point. I would just add to you know what you said there also is um, some stormwater issues that we have in that area that flow downstream. It'll be an opportunity in the future for the township as well um, to address some of those issues. Right. Um, there is a long-term plan that actually will probably start going into uh, design next year. Um, it actually falls on the golf course track um, but it's at the, the very base of the Nisley road track that we're talking about. Uh, we do have what Mr. Wigglesworth is talking about. Uh, both he and I live in the Mill Creek development, which is downhill of everybody that's uphill. And uh, when Tropical Storm Lee hit, that's where most of the township flooding occurred. 
Uh, so as you're aware, aware that anybody that lives in that area knows, uh, anytime we have a flash flood, Church Street closes at the culvert at the golf course, uh, Nolt Road closes um, at, in Mill Creek, as well as Stafford Dam, uh, all caused by upstream flooding. Uh, so the township is going to be engaging in some projects to address upstream flooding as time goes on. And this track could potentially be part of that solution. Any other discussion on the board? So Ms. Pfeiffer, this would be time we can open up for public comment. If there's anybody that has public comment at this point, you, you just need to come forward. For the record, you, get, you have to state your name um, and please sign in. Robert Brewer, I live at 816 Tarpley Drive. That's the uh, last property that abuts the uh, field that you're talking about. Um, at the uh, head of Tarpley Drive, where it meets Gloucester, you have two roads, Gloucester coming from mm -hmm. the west and Tarpley Drive coming from the north. Both of those are a steep hill that people come up. And as they approach that intersection, it's very difficult to make a safe turn onto Gloucester or to get, get off of Gloucester sometimes. So people come through there at more than 25 miles per hour, which is the speed limit. And I just can't imagine that we would do anything that would involve more traffic going up and down mm -hmm. Tarpley Drive. I understand that you could put a park there, you could have parking lots and things like that. But just think about what that intersection is like. We have a hard time having safety. No, then you got traffic commission members here, so. Um, I can't give you the exact date, but there was <clears throat> a day where a teenage boy came down Tarpley Hill in his go-kart type device. And as he hit the bottom of the hill, he and his cart were separated and he suffered a concussion and was in the hospital. It's a dangerous hill that some people try to run their bicycle down and sometimes even skateboarders try to come down. So just want to point that out to the township. Yeah. But do you have any comments on the rezoning itself at this point or at, really at this point? I mean, of course, at the uh, end of the <coughs> road, want to know if they're going to finish the uh, cul-de-sac or because there's a temporary cul-de-sac there. Right now we have no, like we said, we have no intentions of doing any development. So, and I would imagine if we were to do anything, like let's just say on a hypothetical that there was a firehouse that would occur, it would be accessing off Nestle, right? We're in the same area where the house used to be. That's the only real level area on the whole track. So. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments, sir? Just yeah. come forward and state your name and please sign in the... Uh... Evening. Uh, I'm David Tepley at 808 Tarpley Drive. So we are the Tepleys of Tarpley uh, for 37 <laughs> years, and we've been very happy there. Um, I'm I'm very thankful that you've uh, that the board has reconsidered having Tarpley go through to Nisley, as uh, Dr. Brewer already mentioned, a good neighbor for 35 of those 37 years. Um, there there is a concern with Gloucester uh, and and Tarpley. It's uh, it's, uh, I think, miraculous that in my 37 years, no one has been killed. Uh, if for people from the traffic commission, I'd, I'd love to see a reconsideration of a stop sign um, at, that, at that corner. I mean, a stop sign for Gloucester, people do come through at, at high rates of speed. Um, the uh, the cul-de-sac finishing that was mentioned uh, before, uh, right, uh, probably about, I would say 30 years ago, a curb was put across the end, just a, a, a T across the end of uh, Tarpley Drive. And um, then uh, shortly thereafter, 
um, I don't know whether it was golf course folks or some maintenance people just built a dirt ramp so that they could go over that, that large, and it's a very big curb um, to do maintenance down there. It is, it is very unsightly. And uh, I, I have noticed that uh, plows spend a lot of time in the winter time trying to clean, clean that cul-de-sac up because of the, because of the um, unusual and temporary for 37 years nature of the, of the right. cul-de-sac. So if you could, um, if you could do something, do something with that, that would be appreciated. Also, uh, I, would, I would think in, in connection with that uh, repair, uh, storm, a stormwater project could be, could be uh, taken care of because water just flows down uh, the street and over that, over that dirt hump and, and into that field and, and onto the golf course. Yeah, we're, we're gonna be, as we said, we're, we're looking at stormwater on, that, on those tracks. I mean, we did address the Gloucester flooding issue. If you remember that from a couple yes. of years ago, yeah, which we had a couple of neighbors issue. that came in and had issue with water in their basements. Um, and that's what started the discussion of the, the basin and stuff like that on the golf course itself. Um, then we kind of hit the pause button in COVID. And so we're now getting back into we're working on stormwater. So the Gloucester uh, repair did make a lot of people happy. We appreciate that. Yeah, and it did, did make a big, at least we don't have people complain that there's water in their basement yeah. say, well, just good. So. And we, we appreciate this rezoning too. Thank yeah, you thank very you. much for your time. Okay, sir, you, uh, please sign the uh, attendance and state. You there, okay. Okay, just state your name. Uh, <clears throat> good evening. Uh, my name is Faiz Hanna. I live at 890 Center Road. Lancaster VA. Uh, this new project, I support our community for everything to be value where we live. Mm -hmm. uh, my major concern, and I like to share with you, for 21 years, I know the water is coming from Centerville. They went to the water base next to my house. And I have no complaint about this, this with this. And also we have water, new, like new project happened like three, four years to get the water from the street. Mm -hmm. There when all this, they come in uh, behind my house, not behind my house, they running down toward where I don't know because I don't follow this water base it's going. But my concern is what I understand from the letter I receive we're going to have the water, the rain water coming from Church Street to this location. And we have water from Centerville coming down. If this location will be flood zone for us, I mean, this will be affect our life. This affect my landscaping. I need to re landscaping my land. How this water coming from both direction and storage in this land, um, if someone can answer my concern, I appreciate it. And I have follow up question after that. So are you on the corner of Centerville and Nisley Road? Yes, sir. Okay. And if I understand correctly, your house sits up and the property slopes to the back. Correct. And also I have daylight basement. Okay. So I you have a walkout. I live in this basement also. So, I mean, I'm not an engineer, there are engineers on this board, but um, just in um, common sense logic, the property not being developed residentially is definitely a plus for you. The fact that we're gonna, in the future, look at stormwater needs in that property that sits below you is gonna be a plus. I don't, I don't see how it could possibly be anything but a better impact to your property. I, I, I'm not saying they have to, but my concern is where we have the water coming from the two direction mm -hmm. to meet in this area, if we have enough room to collect this water, you see water coming from Church Street all the way to this land. And also we have water from the school area in the front of the middle school, they collect the water and they're running to water base, as I said, 
is exactly next to my house. I can go into the map to you if you want me. And I know you know what, what I'm talking about. Because the water from Centerville, some water is running down to Nestle. And I really, I don't know where this water go. But the most of the water collected from the other side in Centerville to go down and running to the water pass and go behind. And the other street water is new project happened like four, day, uh, four years ago. The water also come into this area. I'm not say I have an issue before, but I have concern now with the new project, how this will be affecting my house. Okay, you want to? I guess I, I would say to, to just sort of support what Scott's saying, this property will be part of a bigger stormwater management uh, process for us. Mr. Bennett, can you please use your microphone oh, for us? I'm sorry. Um, this parcel of, pr of property will be part of a, a, a much larger stormwater process and improvement that we that we plan that we plan on making in that in that area. There's no. Um, it would be very hard to have a negative impact. We'll, we're concerned that it could have a negative impact, but it'd be very unlikely that you'll have a a negative impact on your on your property by what we are planning to do with the property. We're only talking about stormwater management. We're not uh, talking about any other type of uh, use for the property. With due respect, I support anything if you're willing to, to do for the, our community. And also we need, I have another question please with due respect mm -hmm. about the traffic. In the area, in the house where we live, I say I live in this house, I love it. I enjoy it, my life here for 21 years. In this 21 years, we have two accident, two car accident. My daughter, she entered to the driveway. She's coming from Centerville. She entered to the driveway and someone from Nestle hit her car. My daughter here, she's suffering from low back injury and she going to live her life suffering this being from this accident. And this one thing. Second thing, I'm out of my driveway and the driver, careless driver coming from Nestle, and I'd like to share with you this area, if someone watching, the people, they think this is the point for the race. Mm -hmm. They coming from the Nestle, to shot straight. I am in Centerville, out of my driveway, and I hit by the car, and I like you to know, with due respect, 21 years, we be careful with this. And 20 years ago, this is like no much traffic. Right now, is much traffic. I hit by someone, and I have a surgery. And now I want to share with you with respect I have heard the problem. That's okay. That's not the problem for the traffic. But every time I enter to my driveway from the center lane, my heart starts beating because I'm thinking somebody will come and hit me right away. Whereas when I'm going out, I have the same feeling because we do not see the level down center, uh, Nestle Road. I come in here a long time ago sharing my concern i say please we need just a stop sign to make sure the people they stop if the people they stop it's no harm to anyone if you stop and nobody there he keep going the driver he say to his insurance company and the insurance company his insurance company deny my claim for anything even to fix my car not not my my damage in my body he told them, I slow, I look into the left and I go. I swear before the Lord he are in heaven and I am Christian from Egypt where we get killed but we not deny our belief. I never see this driver and I am stopping my driveway and looking toward this Nestle 
I look into a Centerville, I look into Centerville the other way, it's clear to me, and I go, and he coming down from, center, from, from Nestle, and he hit me and damaged my car completely. And the result of this accident, I know the police officer, he said, the other gentleman, I don't know what he said about his response. He gave him different response from what he said to his insurance. And I have the two comment together. Now, I am the one he lost my car. I am the one he becoming disabled with my arm because I know I have a shoulder surgery in the best. And the doctor, they never, they told me no more than 20 pound. This damage to my life. I need to work, I need to collect, you know, I need to live regular life. What the stop sign can do or harm anyone? They say it's a yield. Yeah, but your community people, they never yield. They just, and you can hear every, in, I'm in my house, I hear the, they hear, you know, the, the car, like, like giving horn to other, it's, it's, a, it's a impact area now and it's harm for us. I really, I appreciate if we can put this concern in your schedule in the future to look into this issue. And if we can fix it, we appreciate it. We, we don't want, I don't want to be for myself. Every time I go out my house or enter to my house, I swear I have heart beating and I have heart problem already. I schedule one time for open heart surgery, but I need, um, so maybe someone has said, oh, why you don't go to another house? It's not easy, not easy no more. No. I live in this house. I plant the fruit tree. I make a, I make a life. I enjoy my life in this house. Okay. And the stop sign doesn't hurt you to, to do it with respect. I would just, I would just say that there, there are three members of the traffic commission here. That, that particular issue is a, is a traffic and road issue. And uh, we will work with you to possibly address that that issue at that at that intersection. Thank we you, we promise that we will try to help, um, uh, and we understand your your situation, and we're we're sorry for that. Uh, no, I appreciate that, and also I'd like to say with you, the new hospital. We love, we like the community to be good, but the the hospital is not open yet. Centerville will be crowded, crowded plus nestly people never stop will be you know, okay. too much for us. All right, we, we understand. Okay. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, thank you, you for coming. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Okay. So is there any more comments on the zoning request at this point? Please state your name and you also need to sign in when you're done. John Shank, 21 West Main Street, so long ago. Uh, concerning the zoning, I don't live near enough for it to make a difference to me one way or another, but I do appreciate the township keeping it green. Uh, land value has no place to go but up. I've been in this township for 39 years, moved here in 82, stayed for a reason. I've seen most of these positions here come and grow. Scott, you've stayed. <laughs> uh, I just wanna say to those that never heard me say it, Thanks for the good services the supervisors provide to the township residents. And thank you to the police department also. Great force we have. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any more comments on the zoning at this point? Mr. Chairman, we do have one request from Zoom. Okay, we, uh, we'll get that after this comment here. Mr. Shank. You didn't sign in. You didn't sign in. Oh, I'm sorry. You did earlier. One thing I wanted to note, I do travel that Nisley Road, Centerville Road section a good bit. Often wondered why there wasn't a stop sign there, which I agree with the gentleman before me, there should be. It's the way that road dips down. You can't see when you're coming in. There was only more traffic on that. Yeah. Okay, ma'am. 
Crystal Viana Hanna. I'm at 890 Centerville Road as well. And I'm just asking, why are we discussing rezoning if we have no actual plans? So like you've been discussing, you know, potential plans down the line, but we're not really trying to do anything right now. The reason we're rezoning it is we're treating it as public open space. We're making it reflect what we're doing right now. We don't have any desire as a board to develop it as residential. So that's why we're making that rezoning. It is right now public open space. That's actually the way we've been treating it ever since we bought it from the golf course. So it's just kind of reflecting our way of doing business and sending a message to the residents that we're concerned about residential development for the last 30 years that the township's owned the golf course that we are not having an intent to develop it. So that, that's the reason we're doing it. It's that we've been treating it as open space now for almost three decades. It might be helpful if we explain to her, it is currently zoned residential. The current zoning on it is residential. Residential as in like? Like it could like, be like built, housing development. A housing development could go there. This, the one house. no, well right now there's no historic house on it. So the zoning prohibits a residential development from being put there. They could put maybe 20 houses on there, you say. Currently. With, with residential, currently. right? Currently, the zoning allows for residential development. What we're saying is we don't want that. Okay. So you're trying to protect. Correct. Yes. Yeah, we're, we're, I like to say again, we have been treating this as open space and we're making the zoning reflect what the board wants to have happen there, so. Any more discussions about this rezoning request? Come on forward. Hi, I'm Karen Stair. I live at 3001 Gloucester Street. So I'm at the corner of Gloucester and Centerville. Mm -hmm. um, I'm glad that it's being, um, the zoning is changing. I just wondered, are you going to maintain it the way you have been, like mowing it several times in the summer? I, I think right now we kind of hate it, if I'm correct. And I'm looking at our manager right now, but yes. yeah, we Still basically street form. row and hay, hay it in the main part. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. We appreciate that. Yeah. Really, it's not, it's not, it's not, the use is not going to change at this point. And even the stormwater project that we're talking about is actually on the golf cart course parcel. It's not on this track. Right. This track is too steeply sloped to, to put a good detention basin in. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's basically the water is going to run down there. It's going to go to our, was that the back nine area or whatever that is right back in that area? I'm looking at Tom. So that's, that's going to be where the basin itself would be at this point, actually be on the golf course property. Um, and I also agree with the stop sign um, where another person indicated. I frequently cross Laust or frequently cross Centerville to go to um, the middle school to walk. And it looks safe. And whenever I first start, cars fly up Nisley and before I know it, they're right on top of me. So that would be nice. I agree with the stop sign there. Okay. So any more comments on the rezoning requests? Okay, we got one online, Mrs. Garber. We have Bill Thomas from 3025 Gloucester Street, and he has requested simply an explanation of use number 4H on the slide that is shown. So 4G and H deal with uh, wireless facilities, co-locations, right-of-ways. So it essentially allows small cells, micro cells on this property, which is currently allowed also on the golf course. Right, it's it's just that's and it's stuff and it's in the right of way too. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we have to actually to allow it in all of our right of ways. Right. Uh, that just that's just stating us the same thing for all of our other zones. So, and if I could add to that, in rezoning, it's currently zoned residential. The most common sense zoning is to zone it what the golf course already currently is, and that's what we're doing. So we're not allowing an additional use or creating a use for this, this particular property, it's just making the zoning consist, consistent. Right. So all the uses that would be allowed in open space zoning, which is what this is, um, would be allowed for this parcel. And just to restate again, back to his original question, 
that is a use that is, we were required to have in all of our zoning. It's not just this one specific zone. We have to, by law, provide that use in all of our zones. Any Wi-Fi facility can go up in our public railway in any of our zones. So that's just, it's not that we're doing something different here in this situation. So any more questions on Zoom, Ms. Garber? Did that answer the individual's question? Um, I have not had any further Okay, so you just said by chat, so okay. I would assume so. Okay, so if I'm seeing no more questions, we turn it back over to the board for deliberation. Uh, we got a couple of different things we can do. We could table or we can take action tonight. So what's the will of the board here? I'm ready to vote. Okay, so Ms. Pfeiffer, do we need to close the hearing first before we would take action? Yes, that's fine. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion to close this hearing. So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay, motion for Mr. Wigglesworth, second for Mr. Weaver. Ms. Schweitzer, please call the board. Mr. Weaver? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Aye. Mr. Lefever? Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. The ayes have it, uh, five to nothing. So since we seem to be the, of the mindset to adopt this tonight, um, the motion is to adopt ordinance 2021-07 presenting two land parcels known as 918 Nisley Road and Stony Battery Road from low density residential to recreation and open space. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Okay, motion from Mr. Bennett. Do I hear a second? Second. Second from Mr. Lefevre. Ms. Schweitzer, please pull the board. Mr. We Mr. Weaver. Weaver? Uh, aye. <laughs> so, Mr. Bennett. Aye. Mr. Lefevre. Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth. Aye. Mr. Russell. Aye. The ayes have it. Five, nothing. So. Congratulations. Thank you. If uh, I'm just glad we got this over with at this point. I remember the original hearing when the discussion was occurring and um, we actually did take a lot of that feedback. That's what created the recreational authority that we now have today that's running the golf course and got it out of the township running the day to day. Um, the concerns that we raised at that time about um, the way the golf course was being run and how it was basically causing us to lose a lot of money and a lot of tax support. Uh, the Recreational Authority has come up with creative ways to run it more like a business. And now the golf course runs in the black operationally. Still got some infrastructure issues cost-wise that's caused it not to run in the black yet, but day-to-day -day operations it does now. And that was all started with this discussion almost 10 years ago that created this whole process of where we're at today with the golf course. Uh, so I would thank you for your patience as we kind of walk through this decade long process. So with that, we're gonna move on to our next item on our agenda. And with that, before we go into the agenda, um, Ms. Pfeiffer, I'd like to call an executive session and we will return. So we'll, we're gonna take a pause in our meeting for a few minutes for an executive session. That was that. 
I guess it's just you know, we did that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, they're all smaller. Than that gets awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was nice to have him. It's not actually part of the fire. Then Mr. Pop would be happy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> I remember to unlock that door. Hello. How's it going? You talked about it. Well, they wanted to do that one. No, they wanted to talk. I don't understand why there isn't one. That came up years ago, but I don't remember what, why we couldn't do one. Yeah, that one makes that one makes sense. Yeah, yeah it probably was because it's on a hill, and you don't want to yeah. stop on a hill. I don't know why something like that. This house isn't wheelchair. Nobody's happy over there. Yeah. Friendly. Well. Like, something wouldn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. What well, I know there's a hometown program. I found that. And then I reached out to Denver Borough. They didn't they don't use them. They used uh Riley graphics. Um Okay. It'd be a nice program for uh, Warristown and Lannister. And the veterans pretty much have to do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think a E Town or no, it wasn't E Town. One of the Wilkins one, I think it was a hundred and ten dollars for the banner. Through hometown. But well, I don't know. The only people. Really? But then Diane and I were talking, and it would be a great avenue for um, the ro Rotary or the Lions to get involved, at least supporting some of it. Yeah. Uh, the uh, Legion did, did support years mm -hmm. ago. I mean, the Bell 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 B
Bless you. <laughs> Thank you, Perry. <laughs> Perry Madonna, our public works director on Zoom. He's on Zoom. <laughs> Go to bed, Perry. <laughs> Don't say that, he will. <laughs> no, he's on Zoom. He's listening to you. You can yeah. talk to him through here. He'll hear you. Yeah, all right. And Thank it'll you, be Perry. recorded. Yeah. Perry knows what I think of him. Hey. <laughs> He's even got his uh, shoulder pads on. Oh, heat. I need the heat. <laughs> you undressing? You're not undressing, are you? No, sir. Paired water and, and, and Missley Road and well, where was the water coming from? It was concerning. He thought that the Kirk Street water was going to go uphill to his house. Really? Well, that's what I Church thought. Street water. Uh, but he was also concerned about some of the. What's he saying? People don't stop or don't yield. It's Missley and Sunny Hill. Right. He's at a difficult spot with his house. Or his yeah, house but I, I know. He always has a bunch of crap. You ever see that? Yeah, yeah. probably. <laughs> Put a stop sign on there. What would that? What would what's the problem with? Well, in the winter, you get yeah. stuck on the hill yeah. because you have to stop. Uh, There's no real flat spot I there. <laughs> There's always All something. Right. When we had the the shooting at Sticky Nook. I was on the news and in the paper. And what time did we? What time did we? It's go like on the chairman's ready to start. Eight oh five. Okay. It's now eight fifteen. We've returned from executive session. We were discussing some legal matters, and we took no action in the meeting. Uh, so with that, we're now going on to item number five of our agenda. It's the conditional use. It's a re request to construct the billboard along State Road. Um, and I will open this first up to our solicitor to open the proceedings. Okay, thank you. Um, so this is a conditional use hearing, which operates very much like a zoning hearing. Um, you do have a, an application before you uh, for construction of a billboard. Um, we are... We do have a court reporter here tonight who's taking down all the testimony. Consequently, it's important that only one person speak at a time. Um, when we begin the hearing, we're gonna have the applicant come forward and make their presentation uh, in the form of testimony or exhibits or both. Um, anyone who's going to make a statement for or against any application will be sworn or affirmed prior to beginning. Um, after the applicant has uh, presented their case and submitted their evidence, then they will be subject to questions uh, from the Board of Supervisors, from me as a, a Board Solicitor, and uh, then we will open it up to the public for, in the event anyone has any comments or questions on the application. Um, when all of the testimony has been completed and the hearing is closed, the board will consider uh, voting upon a decision. The board must vote upon a decision within 45 days after the close of the hearing. Are there any questions about the procedure? None at this point. Okay, thank you. So I guess the first step would call the applicant to come forward.
Good evening. My name is Brian Beiler. I'm here representing uh, the applicant tonight. Uh, the applicant is Eagles Mirror Investment Inc. and its principal is here. One of its principals are here tonight, Daniel Daniel Berger, um, and you'll hear from him. Um, we also have Dennis Reichel from HRG. Um, particular development upon which this uh, uh, billboard is, is proposed to be located. Um, Excuse me, Mr. Byler, if you could talk into the microphone or hold it if you'd like, that's fine too. All right, a little better? Yes. Perfect, thank okay. you. Okay. Um, Dennis is quite familiar with the site. He's been working with the entire site of, of, of where this billboard will be located. Um, a little additional background for the board's perspective. Um, as this property has been undergoing development consideration and approvals, um, Mr. Berger and his company who have uh, experience with developing billboard sites were looking at this site uh, in the recent past and had begun negotiations with the landowner, um, David and David Gunya, who, by the way, uh, Ms. Schweitzer, could you or somebody tell me, he was gonna be on Zoom tonight, I can't really tell from looking at at your roster there if he's on there, but I'd be curious. Um, his involvement, he was going to participate just to sort of show his support and answer any general questions that the board might have. We didn't really have any direct need for testimony from him, but I couldn't tell from looking all evening if he was registered there. So The only person I have on Zoom that I'm not familiar with is Macy Eisenhart. So if that's not okay. who you're well, looking again, for, they're I, not on site. I didn't have any direct evidence from him, but he was he was going to try to make himself available. I don't know if he had technical difficulties or what have you. So as, as negotiations were going on earlier uh, this year and then summer and an arrangement was reached uh, with Mr. Berger and Mr. Gunia to, to attempt to locate uh, a billboard here, it was uh, sort of at the end of those negotiations, the lease was signed. And as we always do, we scheduled a time to come in with township staff and present our ideas and and tell them what we had in mind. And it was not until that moment there in late August that we were told that the board was actually considering an adjustment to your uh, ordinance that would affect our proposal. So I guess all I'm saying is we were in due course well before we knew you were even considering a change to the amendment. So here we are. Of course, um, we have our application in and of record and, and expect that will be considered in light of existing ordinance required. Um, I know I don't need to tell the board that, you know, a conditional use is an approved use uh, under the ordinance. And, um, uh, you know, so the ordinance itself anticipates that this proposed use is in a particularly appropriate use in the area for which it's, it's proposed. Um, so um, I think without further ado, Dennis, uh, I, would, I would call you, introduce yourself to the board, um, tell them about your plan that I think is up there and, and uh, where it's located. And, and good evening, Dennis Reichel with HRG. And the plan you have before you is regarding a proposed billboard that would be on the uh, south side of lot number three where a convenience store has been approved and is currently under construction. Detention Basin uh, E just sits right to the north of that. There's a floodplain to the south of the basin and essentially we're proposing to locate the billboard between the uh, basin slope and also the floodplain. And you can see the plan before you, we have all the appropriate setbacks and the uh, billboard is located appropriately based upon the- uh, I, I, I hate to interrupt. Did you get sworn in? Okay, um, let's just pause for a moment and have all your witnesses sworn in at once. Thank you. And so I think that's a relatively uh, brief overview of what we're proposing to do here. I know we did submit a number of details regarding this. I believe the uh, maximum billboard height allowed is 25 feet. 
and this billboard would comply with that. The maximum uh, area of the billboard is 300 square feet and we do comply with that requirement as well. Okay. Um, a couple of things that I'd like to clean up. Um, received a um, review letter from Mr. Haynes, David Miller Associate. I think he's sitting to my left. Um, if you would, Dennis, just confirm, because I think there was a typo in the application, describe the location as in, in um, relation to Yellow Goose Road and State Road of the site. Which corner is it? Well, that would be the uh, southeast corner of Yellow Goose and State Road. Okay. Excellent. Um, you've had a chance in the, in, in, in the course of preparing this plan um, to look at ordinance requirements for uh, setbacks, distances, and so forth. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Okay, and so section 270-7.4C1 talks about the fact that there should be no other billboard within a thousand feet of the proposed board. Do you have an opinion as to whether there's only any other existing billboards within a thousand feet of this location? Uh, no billboards currently located or proposed within a thousand feet of the proposed billboard and the site plan documents compliance with this. Okay, and, and the ordinance requires being um, 50 feet away from all rear and side lot lines. Is that correct? Yes, correct. And that's what your plan re reflects? Yes. And 35 Excuse me, feet Mr. Reichel, if you could talk into the microphone. Thank you. Or pick it off. And thank getting you. me? Mr. Reichel, you're I got, fine. I'm sorry, okay. Um, so 35 feet from street right of way lines, yes? Yes, we do comply. Okay, um, 1,000 feet from any land in a residential zone? Yes, we comply. Okay. Have you um, had the opportunity to consider the location of this board, its height, and how the location would be impacted by the requirement, or not the location be impacted, but relating to the requirement in 7.4 C5 that says it or billboards should not obstruct the view of motorists on adjoining streets or the view of adjoining business uses. The 35 foot billboard setback does provide a clear view for motorists and businesses. Additionally, the top of the bill, the top of the convenience store and gas pump canopy proposed on the uh, to the north of the air will be 16 foot and 18 foot taller respectively than the top of the billboard. The billboard is near the low point or sag in the roadway in the elevation of Harrisburg Pike is approximately 26 feet above the billboard. Based upon this motorists traveling northbound will have a clear view of the road and adjoining businesses. Um, and again, you're, you're familiar with the review letter from David Miller Associates, is that correct? Yes. Let's bring up, do you have that letter in front of you? Yes. And does the board have board it available? Board has a copy, yes. Okay. Item number six um, talks about uh, tree plantings in the area of the proposed billboard. Uh, I think it would be helpful if you would refresh the board's memory on the preparation of the original plan for Commerce Park and therefore the trees that show up on the plan um, that you continued to use in the preparation of this submission. And the fact that in accordance with that comment, number six, there's trees along that area. So the, uh, the township subdivision and land, land development ordinance does require street, free, street trees along street frontage. And to comply with that, we do show street trees within the uh, land development plan. So currently they are proposed along the uh, east side of State Road. Recently, it's come to my attention that PPNL has installed uh, overhead electric lines along the uh, right of way where the trees would be proposed. And so ultimately, 
that appears that may need to be a discussion item about whether those could be planted or whether trees that with a reduced height would be needed there. But ultimately that is something that we had proposed with the original land development plan. Okay. Um, it's also a comment, I believe it's number five uh, from David Miller Associates relating to the location of the billboard vis-a-vis -vis the floodplain. Is the, is the billboard location shown on your plan inside a designated floodplain? It is not. Okay. Is it, is it inside of a stormwater easement? No, it is not. Okay. Um, the comment does talk about a floodplain easement. Could you tell the board what's your understanding of a floodplain easement and, and if and where if the term floodplain easement is described in the East Hempfield Township Zoning Ordinance? The township required a floodplain easement to be added to the land development plan per the subdivision and land development ordinance. An easement was added in the area to minimize the number of bearings and distances that would be required to describe the easement. From my experience, requiring a floodplain easement is not standard practice. Typically, the floodplain is defined by a FEMA study or an engineering, hydrologic, and hydraulic study. In this case, the billboard is outside of the floodplain and does not adversely impact the function or the purpose of the easement. The township's floodplain ordinance does not make any specific reference to floodplain easements. It does regulate the floodplain, which we are currently outside of and comply with. So in the, in the original planning process for the development of this entire site, I, I'm just trying to make sure I, under, I understand that what you're saying is clear to the board. When you prepared the plan, for this entire site and you ultimately included a designation of a quote unquote floodplain easement, what were the considerations you took into account when you established the notation of a floodplain easement and where it was going to be located? The floodplain easement was generally located outside or beyond the floodplain. And generally, my understanding of the uh, township ordinance was that it was to give a, a bearing and distance or description to the location of the floodplain. Now, certainly, we could have put that right upon the floodplain, but that may have uh, likely involved adding a number of uh, bearings and distances to the plan. And certainly, that would have been a, a hard uh, easement to describe. Whereas the easement that, that was shown on the plan is maybe three or four courses and much easier to locate and describe. And we do have a plan that certainly shows the uh, location of the floodplain easement. We can certainly provide a copy of that. Okay. Um, and we're not in the floodplain. We're talking no, we're about not. this concept of an easement that, if I understand what you're saying, is, is a concept that's not even contained in the zoning ordinance of East Hempfield Township. Correct. Okay. And so, and so it's not a requirement in the ordinance, but it shows on your plan. And if I can summarize what you said, you're saying that the, the line drawn for that easement was a relatively arbitrary one designed to not follow the circle of the floodplain uh, foot by foot by foot because of the difficulty that would have been presented, that would have presented in, in an engineering uh, consideration to come up with a legal description, meets and bounds, that followed every jog and turn in the floodplain. That is correct. Okay. And so is it your understanding and belief that when the zoning ordinance says that no build, billboards shall be permitted within the floodplain, that your plan does not show a billboard in a floodplain. Correct, the billboard's not located within the floodplain. Perfect. Um, let's talk again about the review letter, item number seven. 
And item number seven is, is talking in my opinion, and, and you'll talk more about it. Um, and Mr. Haynes is referring to, is asking the question of how does the square footage of a billboard on this site uh, dovetail or impact the balance of any signage that would go on the site for other particular uses of the site. Is that your understanding of the comment? That's right, correct. Okay. Um, is it your understanding and your review of the ordinance that if a billboard is permitted under the, the ordinance to be erected, that the square footage of the billboard is to be considered a part of the total on-site signage square footage that is permitted under the ordinance. I said that very poorly, I think. <laughs> Can you respond to item number seven there and your thoughts on whether our square footage of a billboard should be considered in light of other square footage of other permitted signage under the ordinance? Businesses within the enterprise zone on a corner lot are allowed two freestanding business or identification signs with a maximum permitted area of 80 square feet. I believe the uh, developer of the convenience store is currently working on a, a sign application. And likely that sign application will show that two Convenience store pylon signs are proposed, both uh, less than the uh, maximum allowable permitted area of 80 square feet. Lots within the enterprise zone are also allowed one billboard or digital billboard with the maximum permitted area of 300 square feet. Our understanding is these are separate standalone requirements and not a cumulative requirement. Okay. Mr. Berger, would you step forward? I'm not necessarily done with you, Dennis. <laughs> um, just introduce yourself to the board very quickly. Uh, my name is Dan Berger. I'm uh, one of the owners of Eagles Mayor Investments uh, and the applicant uh, for the conditional use. So the, the first thing that, that I think would be helpful for the board to understand um, in considering your application, um, the zoning ordinance has, you know, a myriad of requirements for the location of a billboard in, in the enterprise zone. And you generally speaking, at least are aware of those requirements. That's correct. And so generally speaking, when you submitted your application, was it your intention to request of this board any modification of any of those zoning ordinance requirements? Or rather, was it your intention that you felt your proposed billboard at this location could comply with all of the ordinance requirements as they are? Um, no, it was our intent that the uh, the plan comply with the ordinance as written. Okay. And so when, when the various items that a zoning ordinance will contain, especially a detailed ordinance like this one that has to do with flip times of a board and, and any maintenance of a site and what's going to be installed, is it your belief and intention that if this board were to see fit to grant approval of this conditional use application, that you would be able to comply with all ordinance requirements to do what it is you want to do with the board, with the billboard. Yes, that is correct. Okay. So you're not asking for any special relief other than a conditional use approval. Tonight. Correct. Okay. Um, okay. Perfect. So um, just for formality purposes, um, you're aware that on your behalf, uh, an application was submitted and you signed it, right? Correct. And so just for formality purposes, if I go through some of the items that the ordinance requires and ask for your response and whether you can comply with them, um, I'd like you to do that for the board, please. So describe the size that you believe you anticipate, whether you're proposing to put on, on this site. 
uh, the billboard would be a double-sided digital board uh, measuring uh, 30 by 10 feet or 300 square feet per side as prescribed in the ordinance. Okay. And the ordinance has a requirement that says um, any billboards that are erected um, anywhere have to be regularly maintained so as not to create a nuisance. Would it be your anticipation that if you were permitted to erect a billboard here that the you would be you would ensure that the property was properly maintained. Uh, yes, it is. Okay. Um, the sign itself. Would you have professional uh, construction involved with with erecting the sign? Yes. Would you have professional assistance with the? Um, I think you would call it in in your business facing the sign and and the facing components. Those would be professionally installed. That is correct. And would they be professionally monitored? Yes. And all of that can be, the, the monitoring of the site can be done off site by the billboard management company, is that right? It can be done by us as the owner, uh, as well as the uh, manufacturer uh, and, and adjusted and modified accordingly uh, digital electronically. Okay. Um, there's a requirement in the ordinance that that has us uh, that, that it asks us to address whether there's adequate public facilities um, to serve to serve the site, police, water, fire, all that kind of stuff. Given your understanding, your knowledge of the location, is there adequate ways for emergency services to access this access this site? Yes, the uh, board would be adjacent to a, a public roadway and would be accessible via that roadway. Okay. Um, excellent. In your um, experience as a developer of, uh, of billboard sites, um, first of all, Cindy, I sent you the, um, the uh, lighting study that we submitted today. Do you have that available to put up? I do not. Uh, Diane, if you go into the well, I, so I'm not sure it's critical because because the company they're from Indiana, they're not here tonight with us. That would have been a bit of a chore to get them here. But is it your understanding that that when you have the the face, the digital face of the billboard erected, that they can control absolutely um, how bright the billboard is? They can um, remotely, and we can as well. Uh, through electronic uh, means. Okay, and so if the existing zoning ordinance says that the maximum, the term is foot candles, um, that the sign should emit are limited to 0.3, I think I have that right, point, 0 0.3 foot candles to the property line, um, do you have any reason to think that the design of your particular board would not be able to be adjusted to make sure that those that that maximum level of foot candles is not exceeded. Uh, no, it can definitely be controlled and and adjusted accordingly based on the uh, the site conditions to comply with that requirement. Understood. And you would intend that they be instructed to make sure that the sign is in compliance based on Absolutely. future site conditions. Absolutely. Future site conditions to, to state what maybe isn't obvious to everybody, the brighter it is in the surroundings is going to impact how bright the billboard can be before it exceeds that limit, right? Correct. So, so until in the future, you know exactly how bright it is on any given night along State Road, it's impossible to, to say how high or how low the board should be set to not exceed that limitation. Is that accurate? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, as other development occurs in the area, that ambient light uh, will uh, will change, and the board can be adjusted accordingly to maintain the appropriate level. Okay. And then I guess perhaps to state the obvious, um, you understand that if you get conditional approval here tonight from the Board of Supervisors, and if at some point in the future, there is some provision of a zoning ordinance that you feel is too restrictive on your 
proposed use, your remedy at that point would be to address your question to the zoning hearing board. But you're not here to ask for anything special tonight. You're asking only to be approved as a conditional use under the existing zoning ordinance. That's correct. Okay. Um, other than maybe some housekeeping items, um, one of Mr. Haynes' comments was he wanted addresses added to the identification that the plan shows of all the surrounding property owners who provided those uh, addresses to the township today. Um, I also provided the lighting study. Um, and there, there it is. Um, um, again, uh, the lighting study has multiple different hypothetical circumstances that that their face and their digital face, you know, would emit light at. But again, they're only hypothetical examples because until you actually have the circumstances on the ground and can do lighting tests to see uh, how bright it is in the surrounding area, it's impossible to say exactly what the billboard would be set at. But um, again, the, the folks who watch fire that, that do that work and, and install those faces couldn't be here tonight from Indiana, but uh, you know, everything that they've submitted to us in that report and otherwise, and by the way, my understanding is Watch Fire has a number of other boards with other owners uh, in your township already. So I believe township staff would be pretty familiar with how they operate. And, and, I, and I have every reason to believe that um, they're a reliable company that, that adjusts their lumens to uh, appropriate standards based on township ordinances and requirements. Um, so if there were questions, uh, I, I do want to make sure we submit those two items uh, as part of our application and they'd be accepted. Are you, are you going to be marking those as exhibits? I'm sorry? Are you going to mark those as exhibits? Well, yes. Okay. So if there's any questions, we would be happy to field them. Any questions of the board or our solicitor? I have done. Uh, none at this time. I have a couple questions, if I may. Um, okay. Talk to us about how frequently the messages are going to change on the billboard. Uh, currently, the per the ordinance, they're allowed to uh, rotate once per hour, and that would be our intent to comply with that requirement. That is certainly not an industry standard, but we understand that's the current ordinance and um, would, would comply with that. And what will be the maximum height of the billboard? The uh, 25 feet okay. above grade. In your application, you propose a condition that if uh, you go before the zoning hearing board to seek relief uh, for a billboard taller than 35 feet in height, or for a message that changes more frequently than every 10 seconds, you would come back to modify the conditional use decision. I think this begs the question, are you planning to go before the zoning hearing board to ask for relief for this billboard? Not at this time. Do you have plans in the future to go before the zoning hearing? Board? Can't speak to that. I don't, I, not at this time. Okay. Um, I want to go through a little bit more. I don't think we received a narrative to address sections 270-7.3 CC of the zoning ordinance, which as it relates to digital signs. Do you, that was a, a request in the DMA review letter under zoning number one. Do you, do you have that narrative or were you going to go through and offer testimony? Are you talking about what was submitted to the township today? You haven't seen that? I, I saw the lighting study. I have not seen anything else. So I, I have that. And again, and I'm going to give that to you. But in covering those questions with Mr. Berger, all the narrative is going to say is we will comply. We understand and we will comply. I understand that. I, I think the problem is we don't have the narrative and you haven't offered testimony to go through the specific points of the zoning ordinance. So I... I would urge you to go through that and ask your client those questions. I mean, we haven't heard any testimony about whether there'll be animated messages, audio messages, 
um, you know, these are these are items that are required as part of the, the zoning application. At 5.44 this afternoon, yes. Um, so again, if you want to run through, if you want us to run through the specific questions in your ordinance, specific, specific items in your ordinance and say, Mr. Berger, will you comply with ordinance requirements? I'm happy to do that. Yeah, I, I think you've covered whether he'll comply with specific ordinance requirements, but I think the specific question needs to be asked as to each point. Will the sign have any animated messages, including flashing, blinking, fading, rolling, shading, dissolving, or any other effect that gives the appearance of movement? No. Okay. I, I mean, I'll, I'll leave it up to you to ask your client the well, questions, but... I guess we, it's been raised, so let's, let's do it so you have it on the record. Um, I gave you a copy. Or this is your copy. This is my copy. So section 7.3 CC1, um, do you have any intention and are you able to, or are you able to comply um, with the 0.3 foot candle above level of surrounding ambient light conditions measured at the lot line? Can you comply with that ordinance requirement? Yes, we can. Can you uh, comply with not having messages change more frequently than once per hour? Yes, we can. Can uh, the digital signs be not placed parallel to the roadway? You will not place them they will parallel, not be parallel to the roadway. Cor correct. correct. All right. Will you not display animated messages, flashing, blinking, fading, rolling, shading, dissolving, or other effect which gives the appearance of movement? We will not. Will you not have your sign have any audio messages coming from it? Will not. Okay. Um, Will your sign have a part of a, uh, will be, will your sign be complete in itself and not continue on a subsequent sign message? Yep, will not. <laughs> okay. Does the design of your digital face, will it include a default mechanism that will make the screen go blank if there's a malfunction? Yes. Okay. And will you, do you intend to uh, have a digital sign within 200 feet of a residential zone? We do not. Okay. Do you have a maintenance plan for the lot? Uh, other than we have the uh, per our lease agreement, uh, we have the ability to go in and maintain uh, any um, obstructions, uh, landscaping. Uh, as, as we deem appropriate to uh, maintain the appearance of the sign. And what about trash and other items around the base of the sign? Who's responsible for that? The, there's, that's not expressed in the, we have the ability to maintain it and would certainly want to um, you know, have the appearance of our sign uh, because it would have our company name on it to be appropriately maintained. I don't have any other questions at this time. Okay, questions of the board again. Yeah, have, with the stuff that has come in, has staff reviewed the stuff that has come in today? No. And uh, Ms. Piper, how would you advise the board on that issue? Well, I, I think um, given the, the recent submissions um, today, this afternoon, and then tonight, I would recommend you probably keep the case open, uh, continue the hearing until next month to give township um, staff an opportunity to review and provide their feedback. 
Now the items, do we as a board now have all the items that, that came in later today? Had, because That's correct. The last one was what he just provided you. So this is now the total packet with what was just handed to us. Yes. At this yeah. point. I, I, I would recommend that for the sake of formality that you mark with the court reporter your addendum that you just handed us as well as the light study as exhibits so that they're in our record. So I'm going to do the addendum with addresses of the property owners. I think I was at exhibit D, property owners, D, um, addressing section 270-7.3.cc would be F and the lighting study study would be G. Okay. Okay, thank you. So we have items A through G at this point in terms of of stuff to review. I'm sorry. You said you, you you went all the way down to G with all your items that you submitted. Uh, with the original addendum, those were the that's where I was in the numbering okay. system. Okay. Yeah, and I think you're referencing the exhibits that are contained with your application, right? Correct. Okay. I would recommend. Um, Mr. Russell, that you open it up for public comment at this time to see if there's anything okay. that anyone has. I will open up the public comment first to we'll start an audience and then we'll go on to Zoom. Is there anybody here for public comment that's in the audience? You have to come forward. Yeah, you, right, now you need to come forward. You need to, we need to play by the rules. You need to sign in. Right there, sign in. And then you need to state your name. You were signed. Yeah, have you signed in? Okay, if you're signed in, you're good. Okay. And you just need to get a microphone and state your name. Let, let's also, when you state your name and address, have you be sworn in? My name is Doug Rook. Does he need to be sworn in for a question? Yes, let's hang on just a minute. Be, wait a minute, wait a minute, Ms. Ms. Mr. Rook. Mr. Rook, wait, 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 wait. Just wait, wait a minute. I, I would like to have you sworn in because question, Finally. you're gonna, you need to be sworn in by the court reporter. Mr. Rupp, you're going to have to speak into the microphone for the people on Zoom. It's the, for the people on Zoom, I'm sorry. Huh? It's for the people on Zoom. Oh, Zoom. I don't know if I'm. Thank you. Why are you putting a billboard there? To advertise for local businesses in the community that choose to do so. Which you get paid to do. That's correct. So it's a profit making thing. Yes, Mr. Berger, you're going to have to also speak into the microphone. Thank you. Yes, it is. Okay. And when you say change every hour, that's correct. Does that stay on here for a whole hour? Yes. Okay, because there's one near the Mannheim Pike, it constantly changes, like every 10 seconds or so. They vary by yeah. township depending upon their ordinance. Okay, so our township doesn't want it to change more than once an hour? That's correct. Why is that? Okay. Are we all slow readers around here? <laughs> That's, a, that's for a discussion outside of this conditional use hearing. We have another oh, change is, that we're this, making to our this side. This is a hearing, okay. Yeah, this, this is, they're, they're complying with our, as they opened up at the beginning of the meeting, we are in the process of updating our sign awareness. They right. are submitting an application under our old ordinance. All right, I, I get that. Okay, you explained that. Okay, I, I think you answered uh, all the questions. Now, where is this going? I don't understand a southeast corner. Is this 
going down the hill toward the creek? <laughs> yeah, this is this has to be a question for Mr. Berger. You can, it, it can is actually, do you know where the new sheets was recently constructed? Yeah. yeah. As you pass that, heading north. North. No, south towards, or north. North towards Route 283. Yeah. You have the big Kellogg's warehouse up on right, the hill. Right. This would be just before that traffic light at uh, the intersection of Yellowfish yeah. Road and State Road. Yeah, I got that. That's the southeast corner. Southeast corner. Yeah, okay. Uh, yep. Some of these directions don't make a whole lot of sense, like that map or that park thing. You should have had it turned <clears> around. <throat> That's my book. Okay, I, I guess it. So there must be a lot of money in having these signs, huh? <laughs> What's the township get out of this? Do you have any other questions for Mr. Berger? Thank you. Okay, any other questions from the audience? Anybody on Zoom? There's no one on Zoom. No one on Zoom. Do we have anybody left on Zoom at this point? Yes, actually. Okay. Most of them employed by the township. Okay, so we complete public comment at this point, um, Ms. Pfeiffer. Um, personally, I would like a little more time to review things. So what what would you advise? Our I, next I would recommend that? Um, that you make a motion to continue the hearing until one of your meeting dates in November, either the first or the third meeting date. I do have a question. Are we at this point, are there any timelines that kick into place no. for us? Okay. No, as long as you continue to a, a date in no, one of your two meeting dates in November. Okay. Keep the case open, come back. Um, township staff and engineer will have had a chance to review the information submitted. They may have questions of the applicant. Um, and, and we can get like a little packet with all the information to, to review ahead of time for the meeting. And then yeah, we'll make sure exhibits. that to the extent you don't have the new um, exhibits that were provided tonight that you have those copies too. So there may be additional questions for the applicant. Yeah, we'll have an opportunity for additional questions. Yes, the hearing's going to stay open so we can come back and you yeah, can continue okay. with your questions since so you didn't have all this information. To review, to re to review what we're, we have here. Okay, thank you. We've got some advice. Uh, I will entertain a motion for a continuance. So moved. Okay. Do I hear a second? Thank you. I would recommend you pick a date and make that part of your motion. Uh, so that so that everyone has notice as to what date we're continuing until. What would be a reasonable amount of time for staff review at this point? Seventeenth. 17th? Yes. Okay, I entertain a motion for continuance to the 17th. So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay, motion for Mr. Bennett, second for Mr. Wigglesworth. Ms. Schweitzer, please call the board. Mr. Weaver? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Aye. Mr. Lefevre? Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. The ayes have it five nothing. We'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're now going to move on to Last couple of means of being done in 45 minutes, we're finally getting to our consent agenda. So we're happy for us the consent agenda. The purpose of the consent agenda is to approve routine items that usually require very little debate or discussion. So with that, I open up the consent agenda to board discussion. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, one of the items in the consent agenda is the Dairy Road Warehouse um, review by our engineer and where they've put the additional paving. Have you checked that for the 70% coverage? Are they still within the proper allowance for that with this extra paving that they did? Yes, yeah, they should be within their allowances. We did not see an issue that they would be over. Okay, that's, uh, that's the only question I have on the consent agenda. Okay, any other questions of the board? Nope. No. Okay, say so not entertain a motion to adopt the consent agenda. So moved. Okay, motion from Mr. Lefever, do I hear a second? Second. Second from Mr. Weaver. Ms. Schweitzer, please pull the board. Mr. Weaver? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Aye. Mr. Lefever? Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. The ayes have it five, nothing. 
Okay, next we'll move on to our action items. Uh, the first one is Susquehanna Municipal Trust dividend distribution, requesting authorization to provide 300 hour checks to each full time employee, approximately two thirds of the unbudgeted revenue of $27,143.56. Ms. Schweitzer, if you could just run with this. So the uh, dividend check from the Susquehanna Municipal Trust reflects our workers' comp or lack thereof of workers' comp claims for the past several years. We have been doing this for the past several years in terms of giving back some of the money to the employees because they are responsible for keeping the workers' comp claims low. So the $27,143 is very representative of what we have gotten in the past. This has been reviewed by the admin finance group and their recommendation is a $300 um, check to each of the full-time employees to reflect the fact of their um, safety record to date. And how many years roughly have we been doing this now? I'm thinking four or five. Yeah, I think that's what I recall too. Yes. Any discussion of the board? I mean, I think she kind of, Ms. Schweitzer summed up our finance and admin meeting pretty clearly. And I'd also, and I'd also point out that uh, this increase over the uh, payment that was made to the full-time employees last year. I think it was what, 250 last year? It was 200, 200 last year. year. 200 reflects about half. This reflects about two thirds. Any discussion on the board? I'll entertain a motion. Let me just get my motion list out here. Motion to approve the distribution of $300 checks to all full time township employees in recognition of receiving Susquehanna Municipal Trust dividend check in the amount of $27,143.50, which represents maintaining a safe work environment with minimal workman compensation claims. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Okay, motion from Mr. Bennett. Do I hear a second? Second from the chair. Ms. Schweitzer, please pull the board. Mr. Weaver? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Aye. Mr. Lefevre? Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. The ayes have it fired nothing. Next up, we have the sidewalk draft ordinance, ordinance number 2021-08, which provides expanded definition for sidewalk maintenance. Ms. Schweitzer, if you can just give the history real quick on that. So we had a request from PennDOT, which is your item number C, to enter into a sidewalk maintenance agreement for the Church Street sidewalk project. In connection with that, we looked at our sidewalk ordinance and realized that the term maintenance really was not very well defined. So what we did was created an ordinance that actually defines it more broadly. It actually states now maintenance and repair shall mean patching broken sidewalk panels and curbs, replacing sidewalk panels and curbs, which are vertically or horizontally displaced and removing snow, ice, and debris from sidewalks so they remain open and usable for all persons throughout the year. And that's the only thing that's being changed in the sidewalk ordinance. Right. And we've discussed this in multiple meetings now. Is there any discussion of the board? Does that match the language in the PennDOT agreement? The PennDOT agreement stipulates that the township is responsible for maintenance of sidewalks, which includes snow removal and ice. So yes, this would, would cover that. And it also allows for the deferment of that responsibility to property owners. Okay. Any questions from the audience? You have to for for our Zoom. We're we're in a new Zoom world, so you got to talk to the microphone. No, right, right there. Those are microphones, but they're not on. Yeah, that's for when we have meetings where we're all sitting at the table. What does Penn uh, have to do with sidewalks? They're putting them in. Huh? They're putting them in. They're repaving Church Street right now. Yeah. And when they do that, they're also going to replace the sidewalks along Church Penn Street. Died. Penn died. It sounded like you're talking about the residents. No, but the residents, the residents own the sidewalk. Um, we don't have clear definition of what the maintenance responsibilities are. And since PennDOT's actually footing the bill, for replacing these sidewalks, which is real nice actually for these residents because most of the time it falls under the residents gotcha. responsibility. And it is actually very difficult to replace sidewalk on Church Street. It's one of the most difficult places to do a sidewalk project. Uh, so this is making us compliant with PennDOT who's paying for the work. Good. So any more discussions of the board? Nope. Okay. Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to adopt ordinance number 2021-08, which provides, provides expanded definition for the sidewalk maintenance. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Motion, Mr. Lefevre. Do I hear a second? Second. Second, Mr. Wigglesworth. Ms. Schweitzer, please pull the board. 
Mr. Weaver? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Aye. Mr. Lefevre? Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. I just have a five nothing. Next up, we have the sidewalk maintenance agreement between the township and PennDOT covering Church Street. We kind of covered that with our previous discussion. Right. Is there any more discussion at this point? Okay, seeing none, I will entertain a motion to authorize signature of the sidewalk maintenance agreement for Church Street between PennDOT and the township. So do I hear a motion? So moved. Motion, Mr. Bennett, do I hear a second? Second from the chair, Ms. Schweitzer, please pull the board. Mr. Weaver? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Aye. Mr. Lefevre? Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. The ayes have it five nothing. Uh, looking at old business, we have nothing on the agenda. Seeing none. New business, right now we have nothing on the agenda. Seeing none. I almost hate to do this, but I am going to throw out one new business item. Um, just, uh, just some feedback that we've gotten with the speed humps on Spring Valley Road about them being too closely spaced to one another. Um, so I just wanna throw that up as something for staff to investigate and possibly consider expanding those speed humps with a little bit more spacing between them. Um, I have did a lot of door to door as you guys are aware. So I got to walk through that community and hear some feedback. And for the most part, it's relatively positive to it. They just are all wondering why they are so closely spaced. And when I've driven it myself, I have to admit, I wondered the same thing because you cannot get up to operating speed before you already are slowing down for next speed home. So just throwing that out there for staff to investigate, maybe we expand those three with a little bit more distance between them. It was, it was a recommendation by the traffic engineer in terms of placement. Um, just saying. In fact, off. we even told the traffic engineer to reduce it by one, and he came back with a recommendation to continue with the three. I don't think the number is the issue. I think it's the spacing. I think we can probably space them out. Um, probably would be good to have one ahead of Sylvan Road. Mr. Um, Chairman, if I may, this segues into my traffic commission report. Did you guys actually talk about it? Significant time this <laughs> evening before you. I apologize. Are. I was not at that part That's of the meeting. Fine. So. Uh, it's it's not that didn't come up as much tonight as the fact that we have some very dis, um, respectful people with special cars, I guess, who stop, go over the bump slowly, blow their horn continuously, mm -hmm. and then peel out. And the accusation and the belief is that they're driving 50 miles an hour between these, et cetera, et cetera. All right. So what I believe we message we gave was that these are outlier persons. It's not the regulars. We've got the speed under control. However, we're going to look at things as we planned originally, and next spring we'll determine what we can do the All best. Right. So that spring Valley Road, we spent half the um, meeting on that matter. Uh, I hope we gave some comfort to the people with their concerns. Uh, we also talked about Centerville Road, uh, reiterating the- Are you are you going to the traffic commission report? <laughs> yeah, I thought that's what I, yeah, I wanted. In the interest of time. <laughs> You're definitely expect, so my only comment to space staff there and based off me actually driving is I think we could put a little space between them. That's, well, there that's also could be game. one up closer to Sylvan and where there are actually more children or people that could be in the roadway and also- that's a straight stretch. That's where it would be helpful. That's the biggest feedback I got was putting one on the other side of Sylvan. Right. And basically spreading them out. If, we, if we start making changes every time Real somebody quick. comes in here, we're going to go crazy. So we're going to stick to the plan that we have. And hopefully by next spring or so, it'll come up to something that, that works. I, I want to praise you for that comment, for Which sticking what, to the plan and Oh, you're sticking to it. Yes. And I like, I just want to throw out there, I did get a call from a resident that lived on Woodview um, asking for speed bumps on their road because people are, every action has a reaction and, a, you know, it, it, we could end up going down the same thing we did in Farmingdale. And I think, like you said, uh, sticking to a plan and let's make logical, reasonable, reasonable decisions and not try to satisfy everybody all the time, every time. Is, is the right approach. Centerville Road, we, we have the similar uh, discussions, but uh, we're trying to make them understand that the truck traffic is minimal. And um, uh, that's just a continuing thing. We've determined the concerns on Millmar uh, speed is, is reasonable and under control and not a problem. And Nolt Road, uh, 
there's some concerns were added to our matrix down at the um, Snapper Dam area. And there's some speed in those straight stretches there also. That's pretty much what we did traffic commission. If, if I can make one comment, just in terms of where we are on the Sylvan Road speed bumps, they will come out for the winter. Mm -hmm. We will have our traffic engineer relook at spacing. Uh, and then after he does that, we do have a recommendation from him to, to put them in permanently. So that's that's where we that's where we are in 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 the process. Where's that's Spring Valley or Sylvan? I'm I'm sorry, it's Spring Valley. Spring Valley. And where is Spring Valley in terms of paving too? It was just paved. Okay, that part was paved. Okay. There would be a question too whether they're bumps or tables or some other details that we'll work out. Um, but they are working, given the data we were asked to analyze, they are slowing people down. And like I said, the, the local feedback is not negative. The only comment is just spread them out. Yeah. So there's not, it's not negative feedback. In fact, I can say that uh, pretty much everyone that I talked to along that stretch was in favor of. As we have outlier speeders, we have outlier residents. They were here tonight, which is fine. So we had a good the ones good that were discussion. supportive of it were here tonight or and, and we, had, we had we had more who weren't tonight yeah okay, we had one, yeah. okay. Um, i'll give you feedback on farmingdale road after we get done the meeting because you'll be surprised actually how many people actually support that stuff that just don't come out and talk about it so okay. um so thank you for the traffic commission report um do we have a development services report? We do not. That's going to come off the agenda. Okay. And I don't see uh, our engineer here anymore either. So, no. okay. And then manager's report. So I was out this past week. So you don't have a written report. I will add that um, the state road dedication is in line. It's going to be October 26th at 9 a.m. Uh, Diane has kind of taken over that uh, charge. She's sent out the notices. She's prepared a... Um, Schedule, uh, what was that? Program, thank you. She's created a program. Uh, so she's kind of running with that that project. Do we have the developer for Kellogg's, all the different parties now at this point coming to? Uh, they've all been invited. Okay, that's they're given a chance whether they come or not, it's gonna be on them, right? Mm -hmm. that, okay. that leads me to ask, we were going to do budget following that and I understand that may be changed now. That's the other thing on the my report is that I need to have a date for the budget. I think right now we have I have three that are available on the 28th or 29th in the morning. I need uh, indicators from I think Andy and uh, Scott Wigglesworth. It's 20, 28th in the morning would be. Well, of course, I'm not Scott and Andy, yeah. but. I or any other date for that matter. I mean, it doesn't have to be those two dates. Uh, any uh, date before November 2nd needs to be in the morning for me. I'm just saying. So, For me, um, the 28th and the 29th in the either first thing in the morning or even on the 28th, I could do late afternoon. Um, the 26th, I, I'll be out. I won't even, I'm not going to be able to make the state road ribbon cutting. Um, I'll be there in spirit, but. Andy, what says you for 28th to 9th? I'm flexible, so. So it sounds like we'll make it at 8 a.m. on the 28th? Yeah, I prefer not to have it 8 a.m. on Friday. So, because mm -hmm. we might actually still have people that want to actually attend the meeting. Okay. Okay. Got it. 8 a.m.? 8 a.m. on the 28th. Perfect. Thank you. Get to hear some good news from Mr. Robinson. Yeah, and you have copies of your uh, budget in front of you. So if there's any questions in between that time, certainly reach out to him for that. Okay, so then we will move on to public comment. Any public comment at this point? You just got it. again in the microphone now. Be a photo op <laughs> for the uh, ribbon cutting yeah. at eight o'clock. Yeah, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a 15 year in the making celebration. Just so. quickly, uh, I don't know who all is responsible, but the reconfiguration of the state road from north side of 283 to Harrisburg Pike is just above and beyond. Thank you. Good. 
Okay, so we've gotten a lot of, I'll be honest with you, we got a lot of positive feedback. For a number of years, we kept telling people, we got these planned projects, they're coming, they're coming, years go by, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming, more years go by. And now all of a sudden, we got State Road done, we got Centerville just going into construction next winter. Um, and so we're coming by fast and furious at this point, and it's been a long time in the making. And, uh, to touch on that, I was talking to George Marcinko today up at Landshire. And uh, we talked about Good Drive. Back when that was put in, I had sent him an email quoting, it is a good drive. Yeah. <laughs> but today, it's, it's like real sound road. We right. need more north and south. I mean, Centerville is going to help, but wow. Well, just for the record, our, our uh, official map does identify Good Drive for improvements. And realistically, down the road, Good Drive will start to serve as a bypass around Lordstown. It's just a logical thing at this point to do the improvements through the village of Rorstown yeah. will require about 30 properties being totally demolished. Wow. And it's just, it's cost prohibitive. So George Marcinko had a great vision and had he not built good drive, I could not imagine what the yeah, township yeah, would yeah. be like to that. So okay, any other public comment? Yeah. If you just got to stay on the microphone now. Yep. And state your name since the first time for you. Thanks, Kennedy. Uh, so with, uh, I'm, I'm an EICP uh, certified planner. Okay. And uh, so I'm uh, looking at Lancaster Visions uh, 2040. I uh, want to know what kind of uh, studies at, are being done to look at the, like Lancaster's predicted to double its population uh, by 2040. And especially uh, East Hempfield Township. So I want to know what kind of long-term studies are being done to look at the uh, increase of traffic flow with the- we, We've option. adopted a comprehensive plan now four years ago at this point. Um, and we just adopted our official map earlier this summer. Um, and those are our main uh, planning tools. They were compliant with 2040. Um, we do have some disagreements with the county about density levels, but we actually exceed the requirements in the county study for apartments and those type of housing in the township. Um, and realistically, we really don't have too much residential development left in the township in terms of available land. Our area north of 283 is zoned ag. It's outside the urban growth boundary. Um, and most of that land now is over half of those properties are now zoned uh, with agricultural easements. Uh, so they've been either through farmland trust or through the reserve board. So realistically, East Hempfield's not going to be doubling in population. We're, we got little tiny areas where there could be some infill development. There's less than five tracks I can think of off the top of my head where a residential development can even occur. Um, so we're at the point now for our next 10 years where East Hempfield is going to be focusing more on redevelopment and catching our infrastructure up with the, the development boom that occurred for the last 10 years. Uh, the development that's going to occur is going to be more on the municipalities that go around us, which is Manor, West Hemfield, Rafa Township, are going to be the ones that see development. Manheim is kind of developed out as well as Lancaster Township. So that's going to be where we're going to see it. Uh, what we're going to have to do is keep up our infrastructure because now we are going to get their development traffic coming through, which is already happening for both Manor and West Hemfield. Uh, Manor Township. Um, Centerville Road and Rotterstown Road is a reflection now of Manor Township growth, not East Hempfield growth at this point now and going forward. And they have a number of large tracks south of Columbia Avenue that are projected for development. I don't know if they answer your question, but we are actually, we have a pretty good plan, I'll be honest. Okay. So our, our comprehensive plan is up to date, which most municipalities can't say that. And since we just went through this whole official map process, which identified our future transportation projects for the next 10 to 15 years, we have a pretty good game plan and it's on our website too if you ever want to take a peek at it under maps okay but no I appreciate the feedback where do you where do you uh work at Cumberland county okay and in their planning department or yeah okay i actually work in mcmahon's camp hill office so okay. uh, i'm in cumberland county so okay nice to meet you yep and good job earlier too by the way so thank you would you be interested in serving on the planning commission at some point mm -hmm. okay we should remember that <laughs> Okay. I have another item. Go for it. PSATs. It lists the top 10 counties that have grown across the 
the Commonwealth, and I can't believe that East Hemfield's not in one of them. Do you know how our census report and how About many? Twelve percent. Twelve percent. Do you know how many? Yeah, these. Twenty. Well, these are maybe? these are thirty. Yeah, thirty-seven to fifty-seven percent change. So we haven't grown that much. I guess. No. That's. I think we get running out of time. We had that guy, Chris. Numerically, it runs from three thousand to six thousand people, and I would think we would have increased in more than that in ten it years. It was under three thousand. It is under three. Yeah. What is our, if you don't mind me, what is our census count now? Because we've always been working with twenty four thousand. Twenty six four zero three. Yeah. Don't quote me exactly. Okay, so twenty six. <laughs> we went from twenty four to twenty six, yeah. basically. Yes. So two thousand. That's only thirty some hundred. Okay. Well, there's good in that. Yeah. Well, like I said, we're, we went through a fast 10 years. We got a slower 10 years coming up ahead of us now. Any other discussion for the board? Any public comment? They say none. It is 9.23 and we will adjourn our meeting. Yeah. No access to the billboard. Is that state?